Hello LIGO grads, it's Kate O'Hanlon with the Laparoscopic Institute for Gynecology and Oncology. I recently heard about a woman who underwent a super cervical hysterectomy and was found to uh, have a leomyosarcoma after they had morselated it in her abdomen. It's been shown that women who undergo this have half the survival of women who have their uterus removed intact morselated out through their vagina within a bag. Um, and, and you've seen the bags that we use on the uh, LIGO website. We, we've talked about them in the courses. It's LAPSAC, L-A-P-S-A-C by Cook Urological. They're virtually indestructible. And you can morselate out through the vagina. Um, there's videos on the YouTube, I mean, I'm sorry, on the LIGO website about that. But it's important to be able to determine when a leomyosarcoma might be present. So be suspicious of it in any woman with rapid growth of a fibroid, uh, rapid growth of a singular fibroid, and certainly um, do not ever think benign thoughts when a menopausal woman has increase in growth in a fibroid. Menopausal women's fibroids should give them no symptoms at all or think malignancy. All right, well, absent a history of rapid growth of any fibroid, um, then get a pelvic MRI and sit down with your radiologist in their little dark cave and review the T2 weighted images and review the diffusion weighted images and ask the radiologist is this not a typical myoma typical fibroid with the vascularity on the outside as opposed to perfusion through it and check the they'll check the margins and, and they can give you the scoop about whether they think it's myoma typical and get a serum LDH if the serum LDH and is normal and the MRI looks myoma typical then go ahead and do a hysterectomy and go ahead and morselate vaginally without a bag but also, I'd like to urge you to consider not doing supracervicals. I think you probably remember this talk from the uh, LIGO course. The, the reasons people thought that a supracervical might be good was because it might avoid shortening the vagina, which hysterectomy hardly does. It might prevent prolapse or urinary or bowel dysfunction or improve sexual function um, or avoid the granulation at the cuff or fewer complications. Well. You know, the Cochrane collaboration has actually done work that shows that uh, um, in, in no less than nine prospective randomized trials in over 1,500 patients, that there, there isn't really any difference in urinary function between a supracervical and a total laparoscopic. No difference in sexual function post-op because both operations are five inches away from the nerves, arteries, and veins of orgasm. There's no difference in quality of life. There's no difference in the surgical time if you take a course and learn how to do it, which you did. Congratulations. There's no difference in blood loss. There's no difference in recovery time. Um, there's uh, less, no difference in fever or urinary uh, retention, and, and there's no differences in complications overall with regard to vaginal bleeding, wound infection, etc. Um, and the outcomes show that actually with a supracervical hysterectomy, upwards of 11% of patients will continue to have uh, vaginal bleeding on a cyclic basis. Um, there's no difference in persistent pain after discharge from the hospital, no difference in the incidence of pelvic prolapse, um, and you'd never have to do a trachelectomy on a patient later on. Okay, um, so ACOG has actually concluded that we as gynecologists should not counsel our patients that supracervical is better than total. We should not. Uh, and I personally think it is much worse because it leaves the patient with the cyclic bleeding with the potential for um, an abnormal pap smear since half of marriages actually are either not monogamous or end up in divorce. Um, and you may have to remove the cervix. As many as 24% of patients having, or having super cervical need a, his, a trachelectomy. And they can still get endocervical adenocarcinoma or endometrial carcinoma because 23% of the cervixes that get removed show actual endometrium. So thinking that we should go ahead and put, a, put the entire uterus in a bag, you have learned how to dissect the parametrium safely, identifying the uterine artery, 
using a cervical manipulator so that it presents the cervicovaginal margin to you, you know how to do this. You went to the course. So congratulations, and to all of you LIGO grads, please continue to have safe, safe, safe surgeries. The LIGO course is designed to help gynecologic oncologists and general gynecologists develop the best laparoscopic skills they can develop. Please register for a LIGO course by going to your the website LIGOcourses.com. Thank you.